This video will be part three of a three-part video series on production of micro or miniature segmented disc. In part one of this video series, I described the slicing of the miniature wood segments or wedges on the band saw. In this part two of this video series, I will be describing the glue up of the miniature segmented rings, cleaning and sanding the glue up rings, and producing a few miniature segmented ring projects. In the final part three of this video series, I'll be turning these miniature segmented projects on my lathe and describing each of the miniature segmented faces and eggs. I just spent the last two days making about 24 of these miniature segmented discs. And I, last night I glued them all up and I did use epoxy. And these uh, segmented discs range from uh, as few as 12 segments per disc. And most of them are 18 segments. But uh, the last one I made was 24 segments per disc. And it did use epoxy to glue all these up. Uh, type bond glue does not work, especially with these small uh, segments. What happens is the uh, type bond glue is water-based, and when that, these small pieces of wood soak up that water, they soak it up pretty rapidly. And as a result, the wood expands and contracts during the, uh, the glue up and the drying process. As a result, you get some significant cracks between the joints. So we saw I, I used epoxy to glue all these up. Epoxy is not water-based, therefore it doesn't expand and uh, absorb into the wood. And as a result, you don't get that expansion and uh, spreading of the joints. And these all came out perfect. They are perfect when I glue them up and they're perfect after the gluing up process. So let me quickly review the gluing up process using the epoxy cement. I am using the West epoxy system for this glue up process. One of the main advantages of using this brand of epoxy is that it has a 30 minute setup time. This gives me enough time to set up the wedges, apply the epoxy glue to all the joints, and also do a final adjustment and alignment of all the segments. I actually have enough time to set up three or four of the miniature segment projects for each batch of the epoxy that I mix. After the epoxy is thoroughly mixed, I apply the epoxy to both sides of the wedges using a small brush. I align the glued wedges next to one another as I add each of the additional wedges. I make sure that the black lines on the ends of the wedges are all facing upwards and alternate between the wedges with the black lines on the inside and the outside edges. After all the wedges have been glued, I then wrap the wedge bundle with some small rubber bands. I use multiple rubber bands, doubling and tripling the number of wraps with a single rubber band to tightly wrap the wedge bundles. I then adjust the wedges so that the outside edges of all the individual wedges are aligned with one another to assure a perfectly round shape to the segment bundle. I also inspect the inside gap to make sure that it's perfectly round. If there's no gap in the center of the wedge bundle, I make sure that no one individual wedge is extending past the center point. I then add some additional rubber bands to more tightly wrap the wedges and force out any excess epoxy glue from the joints. I then wipe off the excess epoxy and give the assembly a final inspection. In a likewise manner, I glue up all the remaining additional segmented bundles. I then allow the glued assemblies to dry and cure overnight. After the gluing up process, I take these and I got to remove the rubber bands. As you saw in the video, as I was gluing these up, I put rubber bands on, I put them on there real tight, I kept you know, doubling them up and running them around. And as a result, they're all filled with epoxy. And these can't be saved, they're, they're sacrificed, uh, sacrificed to uh, uh, just get rid of them. An easy way to get them off, uh, I tried cutting them off, cutting doesn't work, epoxy's too hard. But the best way is to use a wire wheel. So I ran these on a wire wheel to get rid of the rubber bands and then sanded them lightly to clean them up. And these are two that I just finished. These were run on the wire wheel and then sanded lightly. Came out pretty nice. You can see nice tight joints on those. So now I have to finish the, sanding the rest of these down, getting rid of the rubber bands and getting them all cleaned up and getting them ready to uh, run into a project. To remove the rubber bands and excess epoxy, on the surfaces of the glued segmented wedges, I'm using a wire wheel mounted on my grinding stand. I like to grind off the rubber bands, being careful not to use any excessive force that might destroy the wood surface of the segmented bundle. And here's the resulting cleaned up segmented bundle. This is my two inch belt sander. Uh, many of you probably don't have this sander because it's not designed for woodworking, it's designed for metalworking. Uh, but this two inch belt sander, what makes it nice, it has a variable speed control. So I can vary the speed from very slow to very quick. And I get this thing running real slow. 
The problem with a disc sander is it runs too fast and it tends to burn wood. Well, I can get this run real slow and it cuts the wood without burning it. But if I need to go fast, I can definitely go fast. The other nice feature is the belts can be changed very quickly. You can change these belts in, in a few seconds. So that makes it real nice. And this is a fairly coarse belt I'm using now to clean these pieces up, but a very fine belt I use too. But uh, I use this quite a bit for woodworking, even though it's not normally used for that, just because it's, uh, I can run it much slower and I can change the belts very quickly. I lightly sand the outside surfaces to round off the corners to produce a perfectly round segmented disc. I then sand the two ends of the segmented disc to level out these surfaces to a perfectly flat surface. And here's the finished cleaned up segmented disc. My miniature segment of discs are all glued up now and are ready to turn into some finished projects. And since the last video I made another dozen of these small uh, miniature segment of discs because I needed some accent rings. But the next step is to make some thin slices. In the past when I, went, when I wanted to make some thin slices, you know, for accent rings, or for projects, I actually glued my segment ring to a board and then ran it on my, my AccuSlice system. But this is kind of a big board to put a little segment of disc on like that. So what I've done now is I've actually mounted these to some smaller boards. And these can be mounted on my AccuSled 2 carriage and easily slice these uh, on the uh, AccuSlice system. So that's what I'll be doing. So the first step is to glue the segmented uh, disc to my small board. And the way I do that, I usually take my segmented disc. And just put a little bit of glue on the bottom surface and I glue it usually close to the bottom edge of the board. And these are just pieces of MDF. They're about three inches long, one and a half inches tall, three quarter inch thick. And then I use a small clamp, not a small clamp, but I use a clamp to uh, clamp it in place. And just give a little bit of pressure for at least an hour. And after about an hour it can actually be uh, cut on the uh, bandsaw. So just a little bit of pressure, hold it in place while it's being glued. I have my AccuSlice system all set up on a bandsaw and I'm using my 18 inch AccuSled 2 carriage. And I'm using the plate, single plate mounting system. I just need one of these. This is a plate which is what, two inches wide by what, about four and a half inches long, quarter inch thick, and it mounts by screwing into the holes, the mounting holes on this AccuSled 2 plate. And then there's two holes here in which I can take my segmented disc that I want to cut and I mount it underneath here, screw it in place, and then I can run this through the bandsaw to cut off some slices. And I did a test here. I ran this uh, maple board I grew up previously and I cut some segmented disc and I cut some of these which were, uh, this was 100,000 inch thick, this was 50,000 inch thick, and this was 25,000 inch thick. And they came out very nice. What makes the system nice using these, saving the dismount of these blocks, I just cut the wedges off when I need them. So I, if I just need one or two rings, I can just cut the one or two rings off, put this on a shelf, and then save it for the future when I need it. No sense cutting the rings ahead of time because they might get you know, broken or lost. So I just cut them as I need them. So my first project, I'm probably going to make a small vase using this like a stave project. But I need a base and a top. So I'm going to use in this board to cut some thin slices to make some you know, accent rings and to give a contrast for this small vase. So let me cut some rings off, you know, maybe 100,000 inch thick, maybe even smaller. Uh, let me see I'll, as I do it, I'll decide as I'm cutting it. But the way this works then is these blocks now mount onto my bracket here and they're just screwed in place. Now it just runs on my rail and I can slice the board to the exact thickness I want. So I have this set up. My first cut, of course, is a, is a fat sacrificial cut. This first piece, you know, it squares off the board uh, so that it's perfectly square and, and straight for the next cut. So this first piece I do lose. And then after I cut that first piece, I turn my index wheel one full revolution for the curve of the blade and then 
each revolution will be another 50 thousandths of an inch. So if I want to board 100 thousand inch thick, I would just do one turn for the curve of the blade and in two turns give you 100 thousand inch thick board. So that's what I'll do for this first piece. So uh, let me cut my first slice off. Now I'm not using my vacuum system because it would just suck these pieces right through, right through the vacuum system. So I'm not using that at all for this uh, process. Uh, I'm using a three-quarter inch wide blade again, 14 teeth per inch uh, Timberwolf blade. So I have it set up now to cut off this first you know, sacrificial piece of the uh, segmented disc. So there's my scrap piece, you know, about 25,000 inch thick. So that's not going to be used for anything. And now I cut my uh, first board. I'll, of course, release my magic clamps, rotate this one full turn for the curve of the blade, and then one revolution is 50 thousandths of an inch, second revolution give me 100 thousandths of an inch. Lock my magic clamps in place, and then cut my board. So there's my segment of disc, 100,000 inch thick. And what I'm planning on doing here is I'm planning on putting this on top, this piece. Then maybe I'll put a, a thin paduk layer and then maybe a thicker layer, maybe 200,000 inch thick layer on the top and the bottom. And I'll repeat that on both sides and then I'll be my finished uh, piece ready to uh, turn on the lathe. So let me cut a, another piece 100,000 inch thick and then I'll cut a piece 200,000 inch thick. Uh, again for the top and the bottom. Yeah, I just moved the camera to the front side of the bandsaw blade so you can see the actual cutting off of the piece. So again I release my mag jig clamps and one turn for the curve of the blade and then two turns to give me a hundred thousand inch thick piece of wood. And lock my mag jig clamps and now we'll cut off our first piece. So there's my first piece of wood. Now to cut the thicker boards, again, just one revolution for the curve of the blade. And now I want four revolutions to give me a piece which will be twice as thick. And there's my four pieces of wood cut. And I will be putting a thin piece of uh, paduk between these two slices, just to give it an accent ring. That'll be the top and bottom, and then I'll, I'll turn this on the lathe. So that's my first project. For this next project, I have a number of these pieces cut. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cut a bunch of slivers, a hundred thousand of an inch thick, and then glue them back together, rotating them each a very slight amount to give me like a, a, a rotating pattern of the uh, segmented disc. So I'll be cutting a bunch of these from a couple of couple different boards. And the rest of this here, in no sense cutting it now, I'll just save it. If I ever need more pieces in the future, I can just screw, screw it back on here and I cut off more slivers. And I pre-drilled my holes uh, just to the screws go in easier. You want the hole big enough that it doesn't split the MDF, but you don't want it too big that it's too loose. my mag jig clamps and my coarse adjusting knobs and I adjust this just that I just cut off a sacrificial piece like it's right where it should be it's perfect right there then I unlock my coarse adjustment knobs and then I'll slice off my sacrificial piece and then cut a bunch of hundred thousand inch thick pieces until I've cut the whole board out also what I want to do here I want to put a line on here uh, that when I glue these back together, I keep them in the same alignment because even though they're, you know, supposedly all the same, there may be, there may be minor differences between, you know, this wedge and this wedge, and I want to keep them aligned. So let me put a, a line on here, and I'll put it on a paduk where I can see it. I usually put it off center a little bit. That way when I glue them up back together, I'll keep that line in the same position. 
So let me cut off my sacrificial piece and then I'll cut off a bunch of uh, wedges. That's what I plan on doing, something like that. Uh, notice the black lines are all on the same side, and I'll be rotating these by half a segment to give me a, a rotating pattern such as that. So I need to cut at least one more disc for this project of the same pattern, and I can make a, a miniature egg with that. But I cut everything down right to the uh, right to the MDF. I got exactly that nine nine segments out of that. So that'll be project number two. So on this egg I'm making, I'm probably going to want a, a piece of wood on the top, you know, maybe a, a hundred thousand inch thick, and I want to want a base probably a little bit thicker. So I'll probably cut a base, maybe make a multiple multiple layer of base. Uh, that's a good possibility. So let me try that. So let me cut some pieces out of this piece of walnut. I have a piece of walnut here which is pretty near a perfect point in the center, which will make a good top piece for the uh, the egg, and then a bottom base to hold it. And a top piece on top. And that's probably all I need to make that egg. I don't think I need to add any pieces to it. I think that'll be plenty. So that'll be my, uh, my egg project. Next I have this yellow heart, which I inserted some, uh, I think it's put a catalox, dark uh, catalox inserts between the, uh, the wedges to give me a pattern. And I think this will make a good accent ring between the pieces. I'll be cutting some pieces maybe 25,000 inch thick and use those as accent rings. Let me go ahead and cut those. So these will be, again, 20, I'll try 25,000, so I might make some 50,000 an inch thick, but uh, Definitely thinner pieces of wood. So there's my two pieces. These are 25,000 inch thick, and these two are 50,000 inch thick. I think the 50,000 maybe is too thick. My plan is to use these between the two pieces on this base. So it'll be something like this. Just an accent ring in between there. And I think that 25,000 will look good on there. So that's the plan to use those. So after slicing a bunch of these segmented discs into some uh, smaller disc and assembling them into some patterns, I put together, what, nine different uh, potential projects I'll be making. Some of these will be uh, little miniature vases, a little will be some miniature eggs. So I'm ready to start gluing up the first of these segmented uh, miniature discs, and I will be using a uh, Type-On glue. And I'm using Type-On glue because it has a fast setup time. I can put these pieces together and within, within five minutes they're set and I can add another layer. Because I'll be doing these in, in sections. Let me just reverse those and those. And we'll start with this, and we'll put the first piece on. And I want to all stagger the joints. That gives it the most strength. So I'm going to try and get them centered and also staggered. I normally apply type on glue to both surfaces to make sure that I have good coverage of the gluing surfaces. I then attach the Paduk segment to the main body and lightly press the two pieces together to squeeze out some of the excess glue. I also realign the two pieces because they tend to move when I apply pressure. I then apply glue to the opposite side of the main body and attach the second Paduk disc. Again, some finger pressure is applied to squeeze out the excess glue and once again the pieces are realigned. Afterwards I can use a clamp to more thoroughly clamp the pieces together and squeeze out some of the excess glue. I inspect the segments and if they have moved due to the additional pressure, I remove the clamp and realign the segments. It may be necessary to repeat this clamping and realignment several times. 
I'm just trying to make sure the joints between the segments are staggered and all the segments are centered. After the glued up segments have set and cured for at least five minutes, I remove the clamp and add the additional segment layers. I repeat this process until all the segments for this project have been completed. I'm currently working on some new jigs to make this glue up and alignment process easier. Prototypes of these new glue up and alignment jigs are currently being developed and I plan on demonstrating them in a future video. Now I'm ready to glue up these segmented discs to stagger the joints to get a nice pattern. And so what I did, I made some <coughs> small one inch diameter Delrin plates and I'll be putting the in between these and then clamping them with a, a spring clamp. So I can get a pretty good alignment by doing that. I once again use the same process that I described earlier, applying type bond glue to both surfaces and then clamping the two segments together, using finger pressure to squeeze out some of the excess glue. I am paying particular attention to the alignment of the segments. I'm making sure that I stagger the joints between the two segments by one half of a segment width. After three or four segments have been glued together, I can then use a clamp to apply some additional pressure to squeeze out more of the excess glue. The segments will move during this clamping pressure. Therefore, I need to remove the clamp, realign the segment layers, and then reapply pressure once again with the clamps. I continue this process of applying glue to the segment layers, clamping them together and realigning them until all the segments have been glued together. I then apply two clamps to the segmented disc layer to get good uh, pressure on the segments and allow it to dry overnight. I just removed these nine pieces from the clamps. So they're all glued up now, they're ready to turn. So I'll, I'll attach these to a, a plate. I glue these on and then I'll turn those. So probably tomorrow I'll start turning these, but uh, they're all set to turn now. I did uh, remove them from the clamps and I did sand them a little bit to clean them up a little bit. Here is some of the glue off the surface. Uh, but they uh, they look good, so they should be ready to turn. So some of these, most of these become little, little miniature vases. I'm going to try and get some small uh, eggs out of these. I don't know how they'll work, but uh, I'll try. But if not, I'll turn them into some little uh, vases or bowls. This concludes this video on the gluing up of the miniature segmented disc. The videos recorded for this project ended up being much longer than I anticipated. I shot over 40 hours of videos, which I needed to edit down to a manageable video series. Therefore, I had to extend this video series to three videos. In the next and final video in this series, I'll be turning the segmented disc on my lathe to produce some miniature vases and some miniature eggs. I'll also describe each of these miniature projects that were produced in this three-part video series.